of samples you need to process, it can be really tempting to try to process them all at once. But it can actually be more efficient, more accurate, and less stressful if you split things up and maybe do two sets of six rather than one set of 12. You're going to have a time lag between your first sample and your last sample. And if you're, say, stopping an enzyme reaction, this could mess up your results. If it's something where there's a pellet maybe that you're trying to isolate, it could resuspend by the time you get to that last tube. So bottom line is it can be better to split things up. It's also a lot less stressful and you're less likely to make mistakes, say with your labeling, um, skipping a tube, things like that. Speaking of skipping of tube, it can be really helpful to what I like to do is come up with some sort of strategy to keep track of where you are. I always go with the tubes in the same order. Say you're having to take these tubes in and out of the centrifuge and add various things. Maybe you're doing some sort of mini prep or spin column purification, taking all these little tubes in and out. What I like to do is come up with a strategy where I basically like cap or uncap them in order um, as I add things and so I can kind of keep track of which tubes I've added things to, which tubes I haven't added to, and things like this. This is most an issue when you're dealing with tiny volumes and you can't just easily look at the tube and tell whether you've added something. And another thing you can do is you can kind of move the tubes, shift the tubes up a row in your rack or to the side like column wise and just keep track of things that way rather than capping, uncapping. Try to develop a rhythm in your head like one, two, three, four, so you can kind of keep track of things where things are. Um, you can also kind of keep track of where your pipettes are that you've used, like in the tubes, keep track of what tube you're on based on that. Speaking of those spin columns and other times when you're doing things in a centrifuge, I find it's best if I split things up when possible into groups of two. So if I have six samples, instead of doing three across from three to get the centrifuge to balance, I'll do two, two, two. Um, it's basically easier to pick up and handle two tubes um, than it is to try to do it with three tubes, especially when you're like pulling things in and out of a centrifuge and then trying to dump out the liquid from one of these like bottom containers without getting spilling it or mixing things up. Um, and so I find it's easier to work in groups of two or at least with even numbers so you can grab two tubes at a time rather than having to do like two and then one and then one and then two. You can just do like two, two, two. Yeah. Also, if you have to do things with PCR strips, try to keep your sample number to less than eight so you don't have to use multiple, two, multiple strips. Also, whenever possible, if you're doing like a centrifuge step, um, try to have even numbers of samples so that you can more evenly balance, more easily balance out your centrifuge. Um, but yeah, so don't just, don't try to rush in and do it all at once. It's really okay to take things slower and do a couple sets. Um, it makes your life a lot easier a lot of the time and it can be a lot less stressful. Um, so don't feel bad about not cramming all of them into the same, like one stretch. Um, if you just, if you do it, you have to do your mini prep, say twice with two different sets, that's not that big of a deal. But if you mess up all of your samples and then have to go back and try to regrow the bacteria and all of this stuff, that's going to be a lot more time consuming. So more efficient in the long run, even if it's a bit of a pain in the short run. Split things up and have fun.